if you don't do the internal work first, all that is going to just come crashing down eventually if you don't have your mind in the right place. Microphone check, one, two, what is this? You're now listening to a brand new episode of the Play Big Faster podcast. Look what you done started. Talk to him. Attorney, high-performance coach, and speaker Cherie Prince asks hard questions to really get to the bottom of what makes entrepreneurs tick. From starting a business, marketing, strategies, and the ins and outs of their industries. We talk everything from book recommendations, lifestyle hacks, and everything possible to get you inspired and motivated to build your own business. The Play Big Faster podcast starts now. Let's go. Welcome to another episode of the Play Big Faster podcast. I'm your host, Cherie Prince, and today we are joined by financial and life coach, Patty Handy. Hi, Patty. Hello, Cherie. Great to see you here, and thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. I think you do something that's very interesting. You combine your coaching with life coaching and financial coaching, and I don't see that a lot. Tell us how you came up with that combination. It is somewhat unique. I've spent many years in the corporate world, and then I went into the mortgage world. When I was in the mortgage world as a mortgage advisor, I loved working with people, wanted to get a deeper understanding of working with people, and I got certified as a life coach. Didn't need it for my job, but just really wanted to do that. And then I went on to become a financial advisor, and then I wanted to get more involved with executive coaching with my clients. It's a unique combination, and it's just you know the desire to um, understand people, understand those relationships, how we all tick, and what makes the world go round. As a financial advisor, do you have a certain group of the market or a certain niche that you cater to? When I, when I was a financial advisor, no. But as a financial coach, which I am now, um, I work with women. I originally was working with divorced, widowed, and single women. And I had a lot of married women come to me and ask me if I can help them. I'm like, yes, of course, I can absolutely help. So I'm, I'm expanding that horizon to women because at the end of the day, women need to understand financial empowerment, financial investing, and just feel comfortable with managing and being comfortable with that conversation. That is so true. Now, I hope the men still stay tuned in because we do have a lot of great, a lot of great tips for them as well. But when it comes to advising women about managing money and understanding money, what are some of the tips that you generally share with them? Well, I start by, first of all, debunking a lot of the myths. So there's such a lot of conversation out there that this financial markets and all the nuances of investing and managing money is this like taboo kind of scary subject. And it really isn't. It's actually a very, once you learn it, once you understand the basics of investing in funds and the different kinds of funds and managing your assets and allocating a certain percentage of the market, once you know it, you know it. And then it becomes this comfortable conversation. So I just simplify it and I just break it down into common language. I don't use the fancy lingo or the jargon. And I just, I want them to know, I want everyone to know that it's something that is relatively easy to learn. What's the difference with your financial coaching versus when you were a financial advisor? Yeah, great question. I get that asked a lot. So as a financial advisor, I actually, the firm brought in funds. We actually managed the money and we took the money in and we managed those funds. We would do all the investing and the transactions ourselves. As a coach, I do not take in funds. I don't manage assets. So my clients are individuals who sometimes are working with financial advisors because what I do complements their work or they're um, an individual with a smaller portfolio and oftentimes the financial advisors have a minimum so they can't use a financial planner unless it gets costly. So I help them understand how to invest on their own. I teach them about the markets. I teach them about the, the funds and how to look at expense ratios and how to look at performance and walking through some of those basics that the financial advisor will just do for them. I'm not actively engaged in managing their money. I'm just teaching them how to do it themselves. What's the difference between what you do and the education portion about personal finance? Yeah, so the the vast majority is individuals and personal finance. If you are an entrepreneur and you are managing a company, you still have to understand personal finance. You have to understand your money and managing it and putting it where it should be, depending upon your cash needs and everything else. It's primarily for the personal or the solopreneur or entrepreneur who has a small team. One question that people ask me a lot, and I immediately refer them to like someone like you, a financial coach or advisor, because I don't get financial advice. 
but the difference between savings and investing because money that you have invested is not necessarily your savings what are your thoughts on that what you have invested in the markets if it's invested in the markets um, and that is stocks bonds mutual funds index funds all of that that is saved funds but it's not sitting in a savings account earning nothing it's working for you and that's what you want money that you have sitting in a savings account um, and unfortunately i've had clients who have large assets sitting in a savings account earning nothing and once i showed them you know what they're losing by not you know putting it into even a money market account that is very liquid that's now it, the time of this recording, money market accounts are in the fives. And the you know how that works out to be a dollar amount at the end of the year, it's pretty eye-opening. But when you are investing those monies and you're putting it in the market, that's more long-term money. You don't want to be invested in the market unless you don't need that money for at least you know seven years or longer. If you need money shorter term, three, five years, you should have it either in bonds or in a liquid type asset like a money market account because the last thing you want to do is to need to tap into that market or that money when the market's going through a correction or having some downtime, if you will, and then have to sell those assets when the market's down. That would be the worst thing. That's why you want to make sure that whatever you have in the market is long-term invested. That is so important because I think sometimes it may not be communicated how long you need to have an investment set aside. It's not like having liquid funds or a money market account where you can access those funds. If you're going to buy a house and you've got you know, your down payment in a, an account and you want to, oh, I'm, I need to earn more money on this money. I've got a, a big chunk of change, but I'm going to buy a house in a year. Yeah. Don't put that in the market. That would be a mistake. With some of your clients, for instance, who may be starting over, what is some of the advice that you would give them as it relates to financial success? So depending upon the situation, what we start with is getting a really solid understanding of where they are today, especially if it's post-divorce or their spouse passed away, what's coming in, what's going out. And a lot of times I ask that and they're not really sure. They have a rough idea, but they don't really have a good solid spending plan in place. They don't know really what's going out and what's truly coming in. So they don't know if they're really upside down every month or if they've got positive cash flow. And then we look at net worth, you know, what are their assets? Where are these assets? And that includes the home, that includes all the retirement accounts, that includes insurance, all those things that um, are considered part of your asset structure. And then we make sure that those are in a situation where they are properly allocated and properly placed, whether you know looking at those retirement accounts or, or whatnot. Um, so it starts with really understanding where they are today, because if you don't know where you are today, you can't make a plan to get to where you want to be tomorrow or five years from now. Tell us about your journey, because I don't know, maybe you just woke up one day and said, yes, this is exactly what I want to do. How did you start working um, in this capacity? Yeah, good question. So it actually started um, right after my divorce. I remember laying in a fetal position just in tears with the trauma and the grief of a divorce. And my I had a son. I have a son who he was 18 months at the time. And I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? And I was just overwhelmed with everything. And um, I had this very strange download. I call it a, a God wink that it, this download was, you're going to be okay because you know how to manage your money. And I wasn't even thinking at the time about money. It wasn't a topic. It was just more of the grief and the sadness of my divorce. And my son was going to have a dad at home full time and just all of that grief and sadness. And many months later, I remember thinking, I want to someday work with women who are on their own, who find finances and investing scary. And that was a seed that was planted a long time ago. So when I went on to work on the mortgage business and then in the financial services business, when I would speak to ladies, especially, it was the same conversation that I would hear over and over again about I don't know what I'm doing. I feel overwhelmed. I don't know how to invest. This is just really scary to me. I don't want to put it in the market. And it just kept coming up over and over again. So that's when I decided to leave my firm and come out on my own and do financial coaching. The seed was planted a long time ago. That's the financial coaching portion of it. When did the life coaching kind of latch on? The life coaching came on when I was in the mortgage business and I just wanted to get a better understanding of working with people and understand how to better serve. The mortgage business is very transactional. You do a loan, you process it, 30 days later, the client's gone, unless they refinance and they come back. 
but it's very transactional and I wanted to have a deeper relationship with those clients. So I decided to get certified as a coach. It was great. I think it's something that it serves me in my personal life as well as my professional life. With so much noise online, how do you suggest that your client filter through everything? Because they may not have a patty who's just really right there for them. How do they figure out who to work with and what to do? Yeah, it's a good question. There is a lot of noise online and it's hard to know who to trust. It's hard to know what's accurate. There's a lot of great people out there with a lot of really good information, but there's some information that's not necessarily highly accurate. So you've got to be careful. I would recommend, honestly, to reach out to somebody that you no, you know, family, friend, um, or referral of a partner like a, an attorney or CPA or an advisor and say, here's my situation. I need some help. Do you know of somebody that can help me? And then work from there and then interview people. Just talk to them and see if you like them. And you just use your intuition. We, as especially ladies, we're very intuitive and we can tell when somebody is just, you know, blowing smoke or truly interested in somebody's well-being. How much of what you do actually involves money mindset? A huge part, a huge, huge part. That is actually the foundation of everything. I can teach you, again, the mechanics of money and the mechanics of investing and all that. But the money mindset, if you don't understand your relationship with money, you don't understand those limiting beliefs that's playing in your subconscious mind and how that's affecting your thoughts, which then affect your actions, which then affect your results in life you will make the same mistakes over and over again. And I start there, I wanna understand what their money story is because that is going to just lead them to that path. If they don't understand that relationship, they will just make the mistake over and over again. Okay, let's unpack that. What is a money story? So a money story is something that essentially you grew up with. So from birth to age eight, you heard from parents, grandparents, teachers, aunts, uncles, whoever, you heard growing up money stories of what their stories were. So it was money doesn't grow on trees, rich people are greedy, rich people only get rich because they hurt other people. Or from an abundant place, they might've heard money is just energy, money is just paper. There's opportunities and possibilities everywhere. And you can just make money very easily if you follow this, that, or whatever. You've heard these things and they are your reality. You don't have at that age a filter to say, you know what? mom and dad or whoever, that's not true. Rich people aren't greedy. I know a lot of rich people who are nice. Three years old, you don't think that, right? You don't know that. So you just take that all in as truth. So your mind took that in as reality, and then you formed a story growing up. And then, of course, as you got older, you heard more things that were coming out from individuals. And if it was a story of fear and scarcity and lack, that's one story that you're dealing with that's bringing into your life. Or if you come from a place of abundance and opportunity and prosperity, that's a different place. And not to say that you can't, I mean, you can absolutely grow up in a life of scarcity and fear and turn that around. That's what a lot of what we do is understanding what you grew up with, unpacking that, unlearning the false realities, and then reprogramming to new beliefs. What does working with you look like? Is it a six month engagement, a 12 month engagement? What are some options if we want to actually learn how to overcome some of these obstacles? So I, right now I'm doing one-on-one -on -one coaching and it's a two month minimum and we continue month to month thereafter. So depending upon the person's situation and their needs, uh, we will coach as long as they like. In January of 2024, I'm going to open up a, what's called the Minding Her Money Circle which is a five-week group coaching. Each week is going to be a different topic, and I'm going to be teaching investing and then some tax strategies and some really cool stuff. And the waiting list is going to be opening up here in a couple of weeks, but it's going to be a five-week group coaching program. I'm really excited about that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Look, you're going to have to give us the link so I can include it in the show notes. I that sounds will. really exciting. Yeah, yeah, I will. Is there anything that you miss about your mortgage days? My mortgage days, they were wonderful in a lot of ways. It allowed me to work at home and to have flexibility because that was my first and foremost concern, having my son at home. I didn't want to put him in daycare. And so I left my corporate banking career and decided to go into the mortgage world. So I had that ability to have that flexibility. So the mortgage piece, I loved working with people. I helped people get into homes. That was exciting. I was part of that journey for them, which was great. And then I still could be a mom. 
So it was a great career on so many levels. Patty, if you had one piece of advice for an entrepreneur on how to play big faster with their money, what would that advice be? I would say the first piece would be to do the internal work first, because that is what's going to create the external benefits. So the internal work I'm talking about is understanding the money story, working through that relationship, working through those false limiting beliefs, understanding what those limiting beliefs are, because that ripples out into their external world. In fact, 95% of our external current event in our lives, personal and professional and financial, is part of our subconscious mind. And so we have to unpack that, really understand what's playing there. Although we've got to do the mechanical work of building a business and making sure we're doing our books right and the tax strategies and marketing and the social media and all those pieces of the puzzle, if you don't do the internal work first, all that is going to just come crashing down eventually if you don't have your mind in the right place. Wow. What we all want to know is, how do we contact you? Because we just have a short a window here, but there are people out there that actually want to talk to you, ask you more questions, and possibly work with you. What is the best way to reach you? Yes. The best way is to go to my website, which is simply my name. It's pattyhandy.com. So it's patty with the I, handy with a Y, P-A-T-T-I-H-A-N-D-Y.com. On my contact page, there is a calendar link. You can book a complimentary discovery call with me. So if you have questions or you want to learn more about working with me, or you've got just some you know, things you want to work through, I do offer a complimentary 30 minute call. So you can book that directly on my website and you can download a free ebook on my homepage. Actually, it's a women sewing solo ebook and then watch a 30 minute training. That was a condensed version of a five day masterclass that I did packed full of great information. And part of the conversation is the money piece a little bit deeper than we spoke about today. That's all complimentary on the website. If you are listening to this podcast, definitely go get those free resources and definitely contact Patty. It's not often that you can have direct access to someone who's so knowledgeable about these things. So Patty, thank you so much for spending time with us on the podcast. Thank you, Sheree. I appreciate you having me. It was a great conversation. Until next time, play big faster. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Play Big Faster podcast. Want more entrepreneurial content? I like this. Make sure to subscribe for future episodes. I've already subscribed. I just clicked on it. Don't forget to like and leave a review. Share with a friend that needs this in their life. I think you need this more than I. Oh, and make sure to follow Cherie on IG at Cherie Speaks. And remember to play big faster.